Hi, and good evening. Welcome to the Music Hour. I'm Smokey Miles, your host. Uh, we have a very interesting show for you. Uh, what we're doing is a special format where we're bringing music that you won't hear and won't see normally on network television. We've got folk, blues, country, bluegrass, jazz, whatever else you can imagine, international music as well. And um, we're going to bring it right to your living room. So sit back and enjoy. We have a very special show tonight. I've got uh, my guest tonight is uh, Long Tall Marvin. And uh, we'll be back right after this message. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm here with my guest Marv uh, Etzioni, Long Tall Marvin, who uh, was one of the founding members of the group Lone Justice and uh, also a fine songwriter and singer in his own right, instrumentalist and um, bon vivant. Um, Marvin, how long, uh, well, when, when did you first start playing music and uh, uh, did you remember the first moment that you picked up an instrument? Um, I really more remember the, the moments of listening to music uh, as a child, uh, as being three, you know, Ch Chuck Berry, Hank, and um, Elvis, stuff that was just on the radio, you know, Dick Clark, you know, so I can kind of remember that kind of being a, being musical air or musical water and it just existed, you know, so. Uh, chose a musical instrument. My grandfather gave me the mandolin. Uh, did he play? He, did he play the mandolin? He played melodies, you know. But as a kid, I was probably like eight or nine, and he, I just played it a lot. You know, I just kind of figured out how to play it on my own. So, by the time I was in junior high, I found about a chord book to see what chords I'd figured out. <laughs> so that was pretty much how I started. Was a mandolin. Did you? Uh, then you went to guitar. And yeah, some friends of mine in high school showed me some chords on guitar and, you know, and uh, playing drums a wow. bit. Uh, I love drums. I still am yeah, a yeah, drum yeah. fanatic. I'm not quite a bigger drummer, but I, I really respect writers who can do that, you know, McCartney and Townsend and, um, you know, Stevie Wonder. They're all really good drummers, you know, really simple, but they play their songs really well. You know, Fogarty's done that quite a bit. Blue Ridge Rangers record, he plays all the instruments, you know. I've always followed people who've done that. Mm. Yeah, it seems like some of the, the, the best drumming is the simplest drumming. Seems like it, you know. Yeah. I mean, probably all things in life are best kept simple. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, that's true. There's only one son, you know. <laughs> That's the truth. When um, did you have a band in high school? Yeah, I had a band and drummed in it, and then we got a real drummer, and no one wanted to sing, so I sang in it and wrote songs, and I was probably just as much into poetry at that point and writing. And then, you know, someone in the band who played better guitar than I would put music to what I would come up with, you know. So uh, that was probably the beginning of songwriting. You know, mm -hmm. for me, probably even earlier on, but uh, stuff that I did with my own stuff, just co-writing. But it really came more from a, a word standpoint, where I was really interested in lyric, poetry, uh, from you know, just on my own. You know, just a way for me to get through a night, <laughs> <laughs> kind of sit in the corner of my room and write, you know. Mm. Was there one, one particular poem or song that really grabbed you the, at, at, at some point in your life, you know, that uh, you felt this? I, th I, I can re remember like the first Lennon album is, you know, the Plastic Ono band is being, I was probably like 11 or 12 at the time. And that first album was really monumental to me. And I, I figured out that was probably the first song. The first song I think I learned how to play by myself was Working Class Hero. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just two chords, you know. But. Uh. I just thought that lyrically and musically that was such a unique sounding record that it, 
it still kind of runs around in my head. Just uh -huh. the sound of it, you know, it really changed the way I thought about music. I never really heard a record that sounded like that. And certain things that he said lyrically on that record, I just thought were uh, strong and unique. Mm -hmm. and affected me. Well, uh, w would you uh, like to play one of your songs for us? Absolutely, Smokey. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll be back in a minute, Marv. Uh, we'll play some of his music. Hi, my name is Marvin, and um, glad to be here. Uh, I just um, co-produced a record with a friend of mine from New York, Richard Meyer, and it's called Fast Folk. It's a compilation of singer-songwriters based out of Los Angeles, and it's the first one uh, from this area, and this is a song that will be on it. It's called The Arms Race. desert sand She bring rain to a world on fire Women in love She think with her heart and she talk with her eyes the water to rise She bring rain to a world on fire Women in love And it may be a man's man's world and we can sit around and talk about the arms race. The arms race. And all I want, and all I need are the arms. The arms of Planets won't turn and the sun won't shine. Hearts won't yearn and words won't rhyme. She bring rain to her world on fire. She bring rain to her world. The 
This next song I wrote a few years back, it's called The Homeless. Just cause you got lucky, don't mean your luck won't run out. But maybe it looks funny, the way we live downtown. And in cardboard boxes, in temporary tents Some of us don't have a clue On how to make the rent and Some birds cannot fly Out of their nest We are the whole President, this country is cracking at the seams. And how long must your children sleep without shelter on the streets? And who's gonna be the one to carry on the American dream? Who's gonna believe it unless they see it? on TV Some birds cannot fly out of their nest We are the homeless Young men, young women can't find work, sit on a park bench Unemployment, suicide rate up, so let's spend more on defense. Yeah, that makes sense. Just cause you got a home, don't mean you ain't homeless. Just cause you got a heart. Don't mean you ain't heartless Just cause you got a car Don't mean you'll end up where you're driving to And Just cause you got a job Don't mean you'll have one when the day is through and Some birds cannot fly Out of their nest we are the homeless. Good night. Marvin, it's beautiful songs. Oh, thanks. I really, really enjoyed them, and I know the audience did too. Um, I wanted to ask you something about the, the type of material that, that you're playing. You know, those of us who grew up in the 60s listening to 60s music and um, revolutionary thoughts in music uh, felt that there was something really important there. And then over the years, people said that music lost a lot of its meaning and, and ability to change uh, people's minds and, and motivate them to, to do things for other people and for the society. Do you think that things are coming around again where people are listening to words in, in music and uh, that's a, an important turning point for them? Well, I think, um, I think one of the differences that maybe is happened uh, that the, maybe in the 60s it seemed that music was a part of a revolution and now uh, there seems to be a separation that even though there might be a me meaningful 
lyric and potentially revolutionary music being played, the causes that it attaches themselves to are a lot less, are a lot fewer at this point. And um, uh, I'm not even being judgmental about it, just uh, observing it and being a part of it. I mean, the last decade has been known as the me generation, and, and, uh, and so a lot of people from an era have decided to take care of themselves rather than take care of the world. And uh, everyone has to make decisions upon their own life in terms of what they're going to do. And I chose during the last decade to take care of what I felt was my interest and my vision of music and not follow uh, certain trends that I thought were more short-lived uh, in music and also in politics that I thought that it had to come around to the, the heart center. And the heart center is above power. And, that's, and once people realize that, that what happens within the heart is, is greater than the power of, of any false power that's being advertised on TV, whether it be political or, or material, then uh, I think that individual lives will be enriched. And I think that that's, that to me is potentially what the next decade or decades are about. If people are taking care of themselves, that's a positive thing. Now take care of yourself uh, from the heart center and uh, make sure that you are emotionally and spiritually taken care of. Uh, if not, you realize that your economic wealth uh, will not satisfy uh, that, uh, that part of you. And I think that is what the next message, that to me is where the next decade is going in terms of music and politics and, and the arts, that people are now going to want to, they've taken, some people have taken care of themselves materially and there's a, a, a lack of, um, there's an incompleteness about only having a, um, material mm -hmm. items around. So the, the idea that m m music can bring people together, bring, right. the, bring the poor and the rich and the, the um, uh, people in different, uh, with different problems, music can be the bridge. And that's yeah, what and it also can be, you know, music is really a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, relationship. You know, one person hears mu music is listened to one person at a time. And the fact that a lot of people may attend one show means that a lot of individuals were listening to that one artist at the same time, which is the difference between uh, phenomena mm -hmm. and just someone who goes uh, unknown. Or unheard. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, that, that about sums it up. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, there's a lot more we could say about it. Right. Uh, we've got to take a break right now. I'd I'd love to take a break. <laughs> Because you knew I loved you so 
And you tried to find exactly how far you could go Well, I thought that he would change your tune But it took you on a honeymoon There's no justice in this world anymore There's no justice in this world anymore Sometimes I ask myself, what am I living for? And if wrong can triumph over right, if we all leg before we fight, there's no justice in this world anymore. There's no justice in this world anymore. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here and watching us tonight. Uh, we hope you come back. Stay tuned. Next week, we'll be right there in your living rooms. And I want to thank my guest tonight, Marvin. Thank you. Marvin Etzioni for being here. And um, be natural. Jump.